So today I am going to be going on Reddit. There, like, if you fucking know me, you know Reddit has been my fucking addiction. <laughs> like, literally, I love the stories on there. People will post the craziest thing ever. It's a place where you can be honest, like extremely honest, and I fucking love it. I'm here for the cheese mix. So. We're gonna be talking about a lot of topics today. I think we're gonna do like relationship advice. First topic says long distance. So this one I can totally relate to because I'm doing long distance. How often do you talk to your partner daily? This person writes, anytime during the day, whether it's FaceTiming, texting, Snapchat, etc. I tip typically talk to my long distance relationship girlfriend during my lunch break and the evening after work on Snapchat instead of texting because we, we like to see each other. We FaceTime one to two times a week when whenever we got free time we're still pretty early in our relationship about three months and we're adjusting our ways to stay in touch as each day goes by i'm just curious about how you guys stay in touch with your partners all right well for me i guess i would say i freaking talk to my boyfriend every single day uh like the time zones are different so he's three hours behind i wake up at 5 a.m you know when it's 5 a.m over here it's It's 2 a.m. out there, right? Because it's three hours. So, you know, he's sleeping. I'm not going to fucking call him. But I definitely give him like a good morning text during my break. Up like a thousand percent, I call him. Once I'm at home, I call him. We'll be on the phone for hours. We really text and call each other a lot. As for FaceTime, I think it's rare just because we are pretty busy. And so FaceTime is a little more challenging. But we, we try. We try our best for that oh this one's so cute this one's so true and this one says every day we engage in messages calls and play games same dude like so in the beginning stages of the long distance relationship we would do iMessage games and let me just say i'm the battleship master dude i won him like at this point it's probably been like 12 13 times but he's won like three times i'd say um it's pretty cute i think playing games it's one of the best things to do while being in a long distance relationship because you get to like bond with them and i'm very competitive so it makes it fun to like just like play with my boyfriend currently we downloaded the game mario kart version for your phone and you get to play with people online friends and whatnot it's so fun guys it's really fun he's actually really good at mario kart which i'm like fuck like dude i let's go back to playing fucking battleship because i'm the battleship master not the motherfucking mario kart master and i even said this before i'm like oh yeah i'm not doing long distance relationships like back in like my old video and here i am i found fucking the best person ever and unfortunately we do have to do long distance but it's only temporary it's it is what it is you know i knew i was gonna make it work because i'm like you know when you actually love someone you're gonna make it work no matter what dude and i feel like i think of it as like a test like how much do you love this person are you willing to do long distance relationships some people aren't willing to do that which is completely fine but you have to remember that even like being in person having an in-person relationship it's not gonna work sometimes it's not always a thousand percent you just gotta take that chance also i think for me what was a little more scary i guess was in my past my ex actually cheated on me multiple fucking times you know and we both lived in new york and he managed to do that behind my back you know and that's what was scary was because i'm like okay well i dated somebody who you know lived in new york and he still fucking cheated on me like i can only imagine doing long distance relationship of course he can he has more chances to do things but he's also not the type of guy to do that i think hopefully fingers crossed and i mean same with me he you know he probably assumes i'm doing things too you know but you just gotta have that trust if you don't have that trust and like no relationship is gonna work out if you don't have that trust so you just gotta trust them you know anyways this person writes my partner and i always are always in contact every day we send good morning and good night texts there are definitely periods throughout the day where we don't talk we're both working, running errands, etc. So it's not uncommon for us to not message for a few hours. We mainly test, text and then we and then when we do have time, we try to FaceTime. 
we send audio clips and photos too. Sometimes we're both busy and our virtual dates may not happen as often, but we're always in contact daily. I'm really fortunate to have someone who is just as committed to things as I am. Same, dude. Same. And that's the thing, dude. Long distance can only work if you guys are both committed. It's not going to be like long distance is if you guys are both mature, you guys both take our relationship serious because if you guys are both immature, aren't dating to marry or whatever, like, of course, the relationship isn't going to fucking work, at least for me. Like, that's my opinion. I'm thankful that my partner is, you know, we're both taking this shit serious. Like, being in a fucking long distance relationship isn't easy. You have your moments for sure. It's not always going to be beautiful. Like, I have, I'll have like my little moments. I'm like, damn, I miss him so much. And it's like, I wish I was here. Or like, I'll be doing something. And I'm like, damn, I wish he was here to do this with me too. Or, you know, it just, you want to share every me single memory with them. Then they're not here for it which is a little sad you're gonna find what works for you what doesn't work for you and stuff and of course you're not gonna talk like every single time like this person mentioned oh my gosh this one's funny imagine you're about to be murdered what would you say to your killer before you die let's fucking read the comments i'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor which shadow legends bitch was <laughs> clear my browsing history <laughs> someone said thank you <laughs> I'll haunt you in your dreams. I think that's what I would say. I'm very much like a petty ass person. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if you do me dirty, bitch, I'm gonna wish the worst on you. And like, especially if I'm dead, bitch, just best believe you're gonna get haunted by me. Like, you are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I crawl into your dreams and make you have like the worst nightmares ever. And make sure you dream of me. I'm gonna be in your dreams and your worst nightmares. I am going to haunt you, I'm going to throw things, I'm going to turn off the lights and do all this crazy shit. <gasps> oh, what the fuck? Every time we try having sex, he gets soft. So for the last couple of nights, me, 24 female, and my boyfriend, 21 male, tried having sex, but he cannot stay hard. He's rock hard during foreplay. But once he goes to go inside me, he goes soft. He seems to get really frustrated and embarrassed. And I was also embarrassed. I don't know. I guess my question is, am I the problem? Edit. We have never had sex. This would be our first time having sex. Okay, that's my thing. First of all, he's probably either gay or he maybe doesn't have a crush on you like that. I don't know. Because... Why would he not get hard? I'm I, I'm leaning more towards he's gay, girl. Like, he probably has his eyes closed and he you're, like, going down on him. And you're, like, he's, like, mm, whatever. Like, he's probably picturing a guy or whatever. But the second he has to put it inside you, he sees a pussy in front of him. And he's, like, fuck. And he gets soft. That's probably what it is. This person says, unlikely to be you. He's probably nervous and more often it happens. The more pressure to perform, the more it happens. Vicious circle. You could possibly minimize the risk of it happening by not smoking. Okay, that's also true. By not smoking or drinking beforehand, reassure him. What if you get on top? The extra visual stimulation for him might help. Hmm, interesting. This person says, common, pretty common thing. Sometimes if it's a performance anxiety issue, sometimes it's an endurance issue since intercourse usually takes more muscle than foreplay and the blood gets shut shunted out of the penis to the muscle okay this person said it's normal it happens to me all the time i tell my girlfriend you can you help me a bit and she'll just stroke me until i get hard again sex is largely about communication and understanding yes both people need to do their part in this sort mm. performance anxiety i mean i can't relate to that so i don't know this happened to me a lot. Performance anxiety, low self-esteem, not being connected enough sexually, having to stop to put a condom on, various causes affecting the mind. I don't know. I can't relate, dude. Like, I don't obviously don't have a penis, so I can't say. If it's more than just once or twice, there's probably some issue. Saying you're the problem might be jumping to conclusions, but you may not be doing something that he wants. Dude, I can't believe this is like common. Like, I've never had this problem. 
what is there to really think about? You're having sex, dude. Like, I don't know. At least for me, I like sex. So I'm not getting nervous. Like, I don't know. It's nerves or stress. If I had a heavy day at work, I could be in the mood at night. But sometimes I, it just gets to me. And then the next time I get so nervous, it will happen again. And lo and behold, it will half the time. And believe it or not, men do want to please your lady in bed. So that pressure and anxiety of it getting soft again adds up. Can be hard to break. Okay, this person said if he's hard leading during the foreplay and loses it right before you have sex it's 100 percent performance anxiety maybe he's nervous about making you feel good maybe insecure about his size or how long he can last once it happens a couple different times it'll get in his head he'll worry about it happening again and then it does and creates a cycle just talk to him and if it happens then do a foreplay again and quickly get on top while he's still hard a few successful attempts will boost confidence and should fix it Maybe give him a massage or whatever before you guys do it. Then like, you know, go down on him. Maybe kiss him around his body and then get on top. Just like relax him. Or if that doesn't work, watch corn. I can't say the P word, but watch corn and try doing it. And let him watch it while he's doing it to you. And then next thing you know, he doesn't need to use it. Unless he relies on it, that's a problem. But oh, this one person says that he watched a lot of corn. It might also be, if you watch a lot of corn, you're obviously doing it, you know, you're pleasing yourself too much, which will then lead for you to not get hard. Also drinking, like I know when, if the guy drinks too much, he won't get as hard either. Or smoking, like they said, smoking is very bad for your sex life. He needs to quit that shit. <laughs> does he vape yeah exactly it, it has to be the it has to be him smoking or him watching too much corn because a lot of times you can be the hottest bitch ever and he's not gonna get hard because he smokes a lot or watches a lot of corn okay that we established that's the problem next this one is actually one of my biggest fears i think it says, do I, 27 female, get a divorce from my 37 male husband? I met my partner, 37 male, when I was 22. He was 10 years older, which felt really cool. We had an incredible connection. We got married when I was 24. And now as a 27 year old, I feel like I may have made a mistake. We don't have a great sex life because he's never horny. I constantly state my emotional needs to him clearly and he never tries very much. And now it's getting to the point where I feel like so much of what I do annoys him. I talk loudly, which he used to always love and now constantly tells me to be quiet. I try and cuddle with him in bed and he rolls away or says he, he's too hot. I ask for a date night and he grumbles about it. Dude, he's losing feelings for you. He already lost feelings for you a thousand percent. He doesn't like you like that. Our issues have been going on pretty much since he, we got married. So 2.5 years. When I have brought up that I think we have issues, he says he loves me more than anything and that we're completely fine. Okay. Loving somebody and being in love with somebody are two completely different things. For those of you who have been through a divorce, if you're experienced, in your experience, do a lot of you wish you'd stuck around longer and done intense therapy or do you feel like you wish you would have had a divorce earlier? I used to have I used to want kids, etc, but it feels like a death sentence right now. I I love my husband so much. But I'm constantly unfulfilled and sad and daydream a lot about getting a divorce. As a 27 year old, I feel like time is ticking and I chose wrong. Aww. That's my biggest fear, dude. It's, I don't know. Because it, it's like dating, right? Like in the beginning stages, of course, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be amazing. And as time goes on, they show you their truest fucking colors. I think in the beginning, obviously, everybody wants to show their their best version their best self and whatnot but once you get used to each other once you get used to each other's company you guys get a little too comfortable and you're like you start being your true self right it can either go 
bad or it could go better you just gotta like make it exciting your relationship can never get boring because you guys are obviously gonna lose interest in each other come up with new date nights and it's about communication as well like pleasing your partner whether it's sex or whatever like doing things that your partner wants to do when i was you know when my boyfriend was here in new york we were hanging out we were doing a lot of things together i'm the type of person where i know a relationship has to go both ways like yes sometimes you were doing things i wanted to do and sometimes we were doing things that my boyfriend wanted to do i have a fear of fucking you know of heights and all that stuff of breaking bones my boyfriend is a complete opposite bro he's broken every bone in his body i feel like as a kid he's very much into sports he does snowboarding right he was like okay let's go snowboarding they have like this thing in new jersey called big snow i vlogged it before here and i was so fucking scared but you know what i did it because i'm not the t selfish type like i know like my boyfriend did things that i wanted to do now i have to do things that he wants to do and it's fine like it's all about compromise right i think you're maybe falling into the trap that kept me married for longer than i should have been believing what your husband says even when it contradicted by what he does he loves you more than anything but he tells you to shut up do those things sound like they can both be true he loves you more than anything but he resents doing simple things that make you happy again can those things both be true words are cheap and someone who loves you only as long as you don't inconvenience them doesn't love you at all that's so true though believe actions not words a thousand percent i think obviously i've never been married so i can't speak on that but i guess it's like being in a fucking toxic relationship right leaving sooner is definitely the best thing ever but you also have to be it has to be like a valid reason as to why you're leaving like don't just especially if you're fucking married like okay when your relationship you're not you're not tied down to anything right so that like, you can easily leave but when you are like married that's the whole contract you got to do baby you got to pay for that shit to you know for that divorce and all that stuff if you're not satisfied leave especially because she's feeling like you know time is ticking she's 27 and she wants kids maybe those eggs are gonna die if you don't hurry up <laughs> you can end it and find someone you're more compatible with he can also hopefully find someone who is a better fit don't waste the rest of your youth here especially if you want kids they're loud he's not gonna like that <laughs> he's loud that's a fact dude they're fucking loud especially he's 37 dude he's reaching 40 like he's he's becoming cranky like i'm sorry fuck him dude yeah fuck him leave him get you a nice man who's gonna appreciate you who's gonna love you who's going to think you're the best bitch ever the baddest bitch ever who's gonna think not a bitch who's gonna think you're the baddest fucking queen ever the be most beautiful girl in this whole entire world who's gonna gas you up who's gonna show you off who's gonna who's gonna want to put a baby inside you and take care of it and be with you for the rest of your life and grow old with you that's the type of person you need oh my girlfriend took me on vacation to cheat on me <gasps> My 33 male girlfriend, 31 female, let's call her Rose, said she'd been waiting to take a trip to Colorado to visit her aunt. The last time we saw her aunt was two years prior when she came over for her birthday to surprise Rose. Her aunt is like a second mother to her but had to move away with her husband for work five-ish years ago. We plan the trip, I buy the tickets, of course you buy the tickets, oh my gosh, book the hotel and fast forward to two days ago, we're in Colorado. We settle in, a, in at a hotel, visit her aunt, went out to eat, come back, slept, and yesterday went over there again. After coming back to the hotel yesterday, Rose tells me she wants to go back to her aunt's to sleep over her house. I thought that was kind of odd since we're visiting here for about a week and still have a lot of time to see her and we have to uber to her aunt's house but i didn't think much of it and figured she just wants to spend as much time with her as possible she leaves and an hour or so later i text her to see what she's doing because she never let me know when she got to her aunt's house which is about a half hour away she doesn't answer the text and doesn't answer my call and i start to get a little worried so i call her aunt and ask if rose is there aunt said she's not and while telling her that she should have been 
there by now rose texts me saying she's in the living room watching tv with her aunt oh my god what a blind ass bitch now two thoughts are in my mind rose lied to me and she's somewhere else or something bad might have happened to her and she's not the one texting me i told her on i called her right back and called rose rose picks up and says she's in the bathroom and she'll call me right back and before i get to say anything she hangs up at this point my heart is in my stomach and my palms are sweating and i'm freaking out thinking there's no way she's cheating on me with someone i've had this weird vibe from her lately like she hasn't been acting totally like herself and she's done some question questionable things when we first got together but nothing this crazy i knew her aunt would be worried since i was asking where she was so i called her aunt back and lied and said that she entered the wrong address and she decided to just uber back to the hotel and we'd see her uh, see her aunt tomorrow i tried to call rose and text her bitch first of all i would have if my man was doing this to me i would have been i would have put my man on blast and like i would call back uh, rose's aunt or whatever be like yo my bad it's a miscommunication i'm dealing with this right now your your niece is lying as bitch pretty much <laughs> i try to call rose and text her for like two hours straight to see what the fuck she's doing and she doesn't answer i didn't know what to do and just started walking all around town chain smoking cigarettes waiting for a text or call i finally go back to the hotel and end up knocking out on the bed after staying up for a little longer trying to call again and then i wake up this morning to her walk into the hotel room i jumped out of bed and i said where were you what were you doing i tried to text and call you for hours and you didn't pick up or answer anything she said she was worried i mean she said she was sorry and that she fell asleep with her phone yeah bitch you were sucking dick cause shut the fuck up she fell asleep with her phone on mute charging in her aunt's bathroom and then walks to the bathroom in our hotel to brush her teeth at this point i'm furious because i know she's lying and i was thinking of a million ways to on how to react but when she walks out of the bathroom i just blurted out i called your aunt yesterday and she said you weren't there as you texted me saying you were there where were you she freezed and her eyes opened wide and she started crying i already figured she cheated on me but her reaction just confirmed it for sure bitch you got caught like come on everything that happens in the dark always comes to light i don't give a fuck if it's 10 years from now if anybody fucking does shit some shit behind your back that shit's gonna come to light eventually it doesn't matter how long it's gonna come out but it's gonna come out so if you like if you cheating as bitches are out there cheating on your man cheating on your girl whatever karma's gonna get you it's like that one song from Caliucci's karma's a bitch and karma gonna find you all right her reaction just confirmed it for sure and i said oh my god you really cheated on me you brought me on vacation to cheat on me where did you go who were you cheating on me with did you know them this whole time was your aunt just an excuse to come here and the entire time i'm asking questions she's ignoring everything and just repeats i'm sorry while crying she stopped crying no baby no the the lágrimas de cocodrilo no 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 that's not that's the fakest dude oh my god dude i it's always i'm sorry bitch you got caught bitch you weren't sorry when you were sucking that dick though you know so you're not sorry no don't try that shit fuck that bitch i hope she got some std because baby i hope that next day she got herpes on her pussy and her lips because no she stops crying and tells me she has been talking to this guy she met through instagram and thought she'd go and spend time with him while she was here and was trying to tell me that she didn't do anything and that they were just they just talked and hung out but knew i wouldn't be okay with it so she lied and said she was going to her aunt's i respond saying are you serious you're lying to me again you really expect me to believe that you were literally just crying because you're guilty and she starts crying again she finally said she did really meet the guy through instagram and that he makes uh custom jewelry and at first she was interested in a ring but it turned into them talking and they've been planning to meet since i first booked the flight and hotel yo 
this bitch i hope she gets the worst fucking karma ever of her life dude and i hope this guy meets the love of his life after this bitch a thousand percent she said they had sex and as soon as she woke up this morning she felt disgusting and rushed back to the hotel and she kept apologizing to me and saying she'd do anything to fix this and i said nothing just walked out took an uber to another hotel and i've been sitting in the room bawling my eyes out oh wondering where to go from here the flight back isn't for another three days and i don't know how i'm supposed to sit next to her on a plane i feel sick to my stomach and lost <sighs> don't cry for this bitch do not she's not worth your time she's not worth your fucking she's not worth the tear oh this person says chin up dog shit happens i'm dead it may feel like shit now, but there are a ton of fish in the sea and you are going to look back at this and see you dodge the bullet a thousand percent, yo. It hurts now. It will. It's gonna hurt because he, he found out, right? Like, especially like you just feel used. Like, that's really all it is. You feel used. You feel like, damn, like it was never real. Like, because, you know you do give your this you know you do give people your time your energy your love all this shit your money for it to just fucking go to waste and i guess there are a, a million fish in the sea right you have to go through a lot of them to then find the one but once you find the one it's gonna make it worth it there's this quote it says patience tastes bitter but the aftertaste is so sweet i actually used it as my senior quote it's actually russ's quote but i strongly believe in that though it's gonna suck you're gonna have you know you're gonna feel impatient and you know with the sit the when you're single but once you find the one it's gonna be the best fucking feeling ever this person says sorry you're going through that just try to remember humans human beings are different some need different things try talking to her about her feelings and maybe about some ways you could have been there for her no you can try counseling apologizing if you weren't always there for her needs or breaking out of the negative behavior patterns and buying her something nice no i disagree I thousand percent disagree. Some people are not just they're you can do everything right and they're still gonna use you and you're gonna take this bitch back for her to just keep playing you because she's gonna be like, oh well, you know, let me just use my fucking fake ass tears and cry to him again. He's gonna take me back. He's gonna feel so sorry. Like, no, fuck that bitch. Like I'm sorry, like I I can put up with so much, but the second I find out that person was cheating on me, immediately you're gonna i'm you're like forgotten you're dead to me you're that's it i'm never again never repeating the cycle i'm sorry cancel her flight move yours earlier go home pack her shit up or your shit keep moving forward cancel her flight that's so petty do it yes though like like really bro you pay for it you it's your money like you you have the free will to do whatever you want with it like you paid for it you were being nice you you paid for it thinking that this bitch was gonna go out here to see her her aunt or whatever this bitch was out here sucking dick, so she deserves to find her way back home. Like, block her. Don't talk to her. Don't give her the time of day. Don't even talk about the situation. That's it. Like, she she made her bed. She has to lay on it. It is what it is. He says, for starters, leave her. She's showing you the kind of person she is. Take that for face value. Next, go home. Ignore her the whole way. Show her just how dead to you she is regardless of how you truly feel get a friend to get your belongings stay with the family member etc but do not go home with her and allow her to attempt to manipulate you further this woman took you on a trip with the full intent of cheating on you that's not someone who's ever loved you i'm sorry move on and leave her in the dust exactly bro be thankful you don't have to waste time on her turn this l to a w by just not caring and getting emotional i just want to say i love these comments dude come on like i'm here for it because like i get it but also i'm like a religious person right and there's this one quote you can be feeling some way and like something like there'll be a quote on your feed or some way somehow you you see this quote because it was meant for you at that time right and it says something along the lines of like like any tear you have shed on somebody god sees it and like you don't gotta do anything you gotta turn the cheek because he's gonna take it care he's gonna take care of it for you and i believe in that i really do you don't have to do anything you did everything for her and that bitch still cheated on you kick her to the curb dude 
and she's gonna regret it she i feel like people will regret the choices they make but it's on your court to take her back or not i say don't take her back she will figure it out she's gonna figure out her mistake but it's gonna take a while to her she doesn't really care now she's like whatever i fucked i cheated on him i fucking fucked this other guy whatever it's gonna take time for her to figure out that you were the best person that she could have ever found her karma will be the next people she she dates from now on are gonna be assholes they're gonna be dicks to her they're gonna be giving her the taste of her own medicine and that's gonna be her karma she's never gonna find somebody who actually cares for her gives her the time of day spends money on her all that shit she's gonna be wishing she never did that shit on you because karma's a bitch like this guy is going through it but it's he's not gonna go through it for long the universe works in mysterious ways dude i promise you i've been in a frighteningly similar situation to yours and it's going to hurt real bad for a, a while rule number one don't blame yourself this person did these things because of how they, they are and it has nothing to do with you keep your head up champ i can tell you you're a good person you will find better these people are gonna do it even if they have the best person in front of them if that's just how they are that's just how they are they're gonna do it to whoever it doesn't matter if you're the best version person you know kylie jenner got fucking cheated on and she's like you know fucking almost a billionaire if she got cheated on that means anybody can get cheated on it's just you just gotta watch who you fucking date you can change your flight do that if you paid for her ticket cancel that if you're paid if you paid for the hotel cancel that when you get home pack your stuff up and kick her out check with your state laws and uh, about evicting someone go look at least there there aren't kids exactly it could be worse dude like all i'm gonna say is fuck these bitches dude like for real they're gonna get their karma this bitch hopefully caught an std she if she hasn't she's gonna catch one and she's probably gonna die of aids you know everyone's saying cancel the flight and just go by yourself this is terrible sorry to hear you're going through this heartache is a bitch first and foremost it sounds like you're a great catch you even went out of your way to let her aunt know she was okay and that it was all a misunderstanding. You didn't have to do any of that. Or you could have told her the truth and didn't. That would be me. I would have fucking said the truth. You said she had done some shady stuff in early stages. So in a way, you already knew this girl was not it. Cry your eyes out if you must. But do it while hiking in one of the beautiful trails in Colorado. Go explore the city by yourself you're never you never know who you'll meet dead ass like maybe this was supposed to happen and you know what you can sit in your fucking room and cry your fucking ass out or you can enjoy the you're like there for vacation right enjoy it go to a bar have yourself some self-care moment you just never know someone's gonna see you and be like damn that guy's fucking hot that guy they're gonna know your worth they're gonna see your worth there's one thing there's just one quote i might probably put it up here but it says something along the lines of like while you're looking at other women someone is looking at yours this bitch didn't see your worth but baby somebody else will and somebody will treat you right and somebody was gonna is gonna treat you right forever so so that you never go because you're that bitch all right stay strong honestly i think i'm gonna end it at that i mean there's so many other more reddit posts but I think that was the best one to end on. Hope you guys like this video. If you guys like it, subscribe. It's free. Like, comment, share. I do have a Depop, so if you guys are interested in purchasing things, maybe checking my Depop out, link will be down below, as well as my Instagram and TikTok. Also, go check out my last video where I talk about what's in my bag. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Peace.